I hope that you have figured out by now that here at Essential Craftsman, we are sort of obsessed with the value of work and of craftsmanship. And it just seems important to us to help more people sort of experience craft and making. And, and then once you've learned to do something a little bit, take it to the next level, right? Well, I am delighted to announce that I think we've figured out a way to give more people a chance to make something. Do you remember this ax? You may have watched me restore this. I mean, I rehafted it and cleaned it up a little bit. I haven't sharpened it yet, but, but I mean, restoring an ax is a good project, right? And maybe you've tried that or you're thinking of trying it. Well, this little kit right here has within it the next step in restoring an ax, and that is everything you need to make a sheath or a scabbard or a case, call it what you want, to protect an ax that you maybe have restored or purchased. Now, here's the thing. I don't know how many of you are leather workers, but if you're not, you're in the same position I am. Never done anything like this, but I'm gonna open up this packet. It's got everything that I need to do it, and I'm gonna see if I can make a scabbard for this little ax. So here's the kit, and frankly, I'm really delighted with this. Number one, you get a lot of extra leather. There's enough leather here to do a, a scabbard for a bigger ax if you want, but we're not talking about that right now. You got lots of material. You got easy to follow instructions. I hope, I haven't done this yet, so I hope they're easy to follow instructions. You got a bunch of extra rivets. You got two scissor clips if you wanna make key fobs out of your leftovers. But the part I like the best is it includes a tool and not just any tool, but a Made in America C.S. Osborne hole punch. What that means is this is as good a hole punch as you can buy, and so if you go ahead and become a leather worker, this will always be suitable for whatever level of, of expertise or craftsmanship you aspire to and attain. Great little tool, and you're gonna use it on this little project. So wish me luck as I dive into this, because you know, the big, the big sort of, uh, consistent characteristic of beginners is our expectations are high, right? So when you begin on this, you're not going to have the disadvantage of having a camera staring down your throat while you're doing this for the first time, but we're gonna do the best we can. We're gonna make a scabbard and see how this whole project works out. Wish me luck. Here's the thing. I've never done anything like this before in my life. The extent of my leather work over the years has been using bits and pieces of belts and bags and well, boots really, to repair work gear. And it's all been rough, really rough. So I'm a beginner at this just like you are. And you're gonna get a chance to watch my first swing at anything like this right now. Right off the bat, you've got to know that there are two patterns on this sheet of cardstock. There's a pattern for a single bit axe on the front and a pattern for a double bitted axe on the back. So be sure to read every single word on both sides before you start cutting because there is important information on both sides for both projects. But don't be confused as you watch this video. If you're a person that makes things, this is going to be intuitive and second nature. But if you're using this as a teaching tool for a youngster, take a lot of time here to help them think about visualizing a process, rotating it in their mind to see new solutions, and then proceeding with caution. Now the obvious impulse for them that's got to be resisted is to assume that this is simple, move too quickly, and then have to back up and start again. So you probably noticed that when I started out, I started with a knife and then switched to scissors. That was dumb. Everybody knows that scissors work much better and I should have started with those from the beginning. And besides that, full disclosure, if you watch closely, you're gonna see that I cut the pattern a little too small along the bottom of the ax 
and had to add just a hip shot amount right at leather slicing time. I'm not going to try to explain every step of this project, but I will tell you a few of the things that I learned as I went, and the first is how important your paper pattern is. Paper is a lot less expensive, and it's very representative of how the leather will fold and fit. So if you're doing something with leather, take all the time you need to build it out of paper first. I've watched Steve do this a lot, and now I get it. And the crazy thing is, you can't really do this with blacksmithing or even woodwork. But with leather, it works great. Send me a picture of what it was sitting on when it was heating up. Right. Once you are totally happy with the paper pattern, well, we it's time to get out the knife. But take however much time you need first to make sure that the knife is sharp, really sharp. In fact, lesson one here, if you're teaching a kid, might be how to sharpen a knife. And lesson two is going to have to be about keeping fingertips safe. There's a great opportunity here to learn just how quickly a sharp knife can slice right into your hand. And then also, be sure to use lots of pressure down on the piece that you're keeping to keep it in place while you work. Boy, when these knives because are it's going to try to get away if it can. The next thing is, while I was putting this project together, I found myself thinking about how long people have been making things out of leather. It's one of the original survival materials from every culture as far as I know. We're going to talk more about this in another video later on, but as a guy who was appreciative and inspired by ancient craft, this was a fun part of the project for me. Make sure you're driving the punch down against a piece of wood or maybe plastic, or at least something that will securely resist the blows but not blunt the end of the punch. And also, that you don't drive the punch much farther through the work than you need to, or like me, you may have to spend a few moments working it back out of the block. These brass rivets are super handy. They go together smoothly, they hold really well, and they look terrific. However, they do require a little hammer control and nice square blows, or they can easily bend over sideways and be wrecked. So you might consider letting a kid practice a little bit, maybe on a handful of roofing nails, before striking that first blow.
Also, give some thought to which rivets you set in place first. And when you run the rows around the edges, capture the ends and then infill. Another thing, when I was a kid, we had horses, ponies really, and I was in love with my little Welch stallion. Yeah, let me clarify that. My dad actually gave his 10-year-old kid a two-year-old 600-pound green broke stud horse, and I survived it. But Mr., that was his name, Mr. and I turned into a good team, and my love affair with that pony naturally triggered an interest in horse tack generally. We even ended up with a pony cart, and so I learned to put my buddy into harness and drive him all over the neighborhood. Saddles and cinches, bridles and cruppers and britchens and breast collars all showed up in my vocabulary before I was even a teenager, and all of it was made of leather. Maybe you've seen Jimmy Duresta here on YouTube. He uses leather quite a bit in the beautiful, beautiful things that he makes. But not me. For some reason, I've never really utilized it much at all. But doing this little project is helping me maybe be more comfortable with it, I hope. I guess maybe one reason I've always avoided leather is because I never really had any leather. There were no local sources of leather that I knew of. And getting and using the right leather for the right project is half the battle. There are dozens of types of tanning processes, and dozens of species, and even dozens of different parts of the animals to make different types of leather, each with its, you know, its strong and weak suits. An even bigger obstacle for me was that I didn't know anybody that could or would teach me anything about it until I met Steve Harris. So today, I am fresh out of excuses. Well, that went pretty good. It was, uh, I kind of was having to feel my way forward a little bit and make sure I was interpreting the, the drawing right and do a little and check a little and do a little and check a little, but that's standard with making almost anything that involves workmanship of risk. I, all in all, I think this is a great project for several reasons. Number one, it's going to keep you from getting cut on the axe. And that's one thing I'll mention is that this is nice leather, but it's not real stiff. It's pliable and it's soft and it works great for a light axe. I don't think probably it's ideal for a heavy axe, but hey, it's going to, nobody's going to get cut on that. So the leather is very workable, it's very forgiving, and it's soft. The next thing is you got a lot of leather left over. You got, you got pieces and pieces and enough probably to put together another little scabbard, you know, for a hatchet. I might do that someday, so that's a plus. There's parts in there and enough, le enough leather to make a keychain if you want. I mean, who doesn't need a keychain, right? We've included two of these little scissor clips. Got five rivets left over, bonus. Now you could, I could have put more rivets around the rim of that ax, but I don't think it needed it. So here's the deal. If you've got a young person, if you've got a son or a daughter that you want to start you know, getting their hands in some craft, this is a good place to start because it's not going to bore you. I mean, you're going to have to have your hands in this and your head into it, but it's only at a level that they would be able to participate also. It's not like, you know, they're going to help you, you know, rebuild the carburetor on the Chevy. They can't help with that. They just watch until they're bored. But on this, there's always a task they can do. Maybe you've got a granddaughter. I don't know. Maybe you just want to dive in yourself because leather work has been interesting. I can tell you this. I've got a new respect for Steve Harris and what he does with leather. It doesn't just fall into the shape you want it to fall into. Now, if you go ahead and buy one of these kits, great. If you don't buy one, get some leather and build something anyway. 
But if you do decide to, you know, buy one of these things and put it to work, we're going to have a very detailed video, probably more detail than you're going to want to listen to, but we're not going to let you twist in the wind because there were a couple of things that I was uncertain of and kind of figured out the hard way. But all in all, you know, it's something that everybody can think about, and that is it's never the wrong thing to make something with your own hands instead of just ordering it online. It's just never wrong to make something. And by the time you make a few things, they're going to be getting pro quality or at least very acceptable quality. And you are going to have that satisfaction that comes from using your head and your hands and a few tools to make something of lasting utility and hopefully some beauty. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Thank you.